Welcome to the RSP Boiler Room. I'm Matt Walden with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. It's a Friday evening before the Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. I'm going to be heading out there with my buddy Cecil Lammy and Gene Brammel. And I'm just minding my own business watching some tape of Christian McCaffrey. Running back worth appreciating for sure. But I can't keep my eyes off number five of Washington. Joe Mathis. I keep watching him and I think, holy shit, Joe Mathis. So that's my name from Joe Mathis, excuse my language. Holy shit, Joe Mathis, because that's how I feel about this guy. 6'2", 255, speed off the edge, convert speed to power, can bend. We're going to watch some Joe Mathis this evening. It's already, oh, I don't know, 2 o'clock in the morning right now. I've been staying up till 7 o'clock most mornings right now for the month of January working the late night hours what the hell do else do I got to do but watch a really good outside edge prospect extraordinaire so that's what we're gonna do today on this week's film room is have my first film room this year on a defensive prospect and I think he's more than worth it so let's get one of the first things I like about Mathis is you see him playing both sides both the left and the right side they move him around a little bit and when you watch him play one of those elements that you like about an outside player is whether he has heavy hands or not and watch the strike on the tight end just moves a man to the side now he gets pulled along with him and that gives McCaffrey a lane but you already see the strike here that strike to move a man with that kind of violence that's gonna come up again and it's not going to be just against tight ends either. And this is some speed to power here. And also just understanding when you have a man off balance and taking him out. And watch this right tackle just get overwhelmed by Mathis at the top of the, the formation here. Watch him just bury his head right into the chest and just knock that man backwards. Now, he's not able to get the sack, but he does force the pressure. He's almost able to maintain his balance and scramble to get his hands on the ankles of the quarterback. The quarterback gets a few yards on the play, but I like the disruption here. I like what I see about his ability not only to get around a corner, which we're going to see later, but to just run through you. And sometimes serving notice that you're, you're able to run through a tackle that tackle is going to be on guard for that, and that's going to set up other moves. Let's see our buddy Mathis against the run up top here. Got a run to left end. He takes on this edge man. He gets clean off of it. Takes on the lead fullback here. And the fact that he's able to, or is this the lead fullback? This is the wing back, I believe. No, it's lead fullback. Takes on this lead fullback and forces McCaffrey back inside, and then he can rip Shed. And while he isn't part of the tackle, he closes that gap down. I mean, getting off of that tackle was really nice. Or the tight end, excuse me. Gets off the tight end. Gets some penetration here so that he forces the lead block to be shallower than the back would want it to be prevents a runway downhill forces the cut inside minimal gain gotta like that some decent discipline there good athletic ability ability to take on multiple defenders understand his responsibility like it now this is an, an example of great power but you still see the power against this left tackle where he's able to push him back into the pocket even if he doesn't get the sack He's starting to work around the edge, then just decides to push inside. And he backs that man into the quarterback's passing lane. The quarterback isn't affected, but a lot of times when you're that close and you're able to compress that pocket, good things happen. Now, we saw this play before in the McCaffrey video that I produced. But watch him duck under this right tackle, turn the corner, split the running back, by getting his shoulders, his one shoulder in between the tackle and the back. Use one arm to push off. He's getting rip, rode to the ground 
and still gets a hand on the quarterback and forces the quarterback to try and run and the quarterback gets sacked by a teammate. Ridiculous. Speed, bend. This is great bend to duck and to be turning a corner bending like this and then have the ability to use your hands in the process of that. Yeah, this is a disruptive player. And while I'm on the outside of the right tackle, let's put a spin move in there. That was a nasty spin move. Not for it for Christian McCaffrey here cleaning up, who makes a nice play. This could have been devastating. So what we've seen thus far is heavy hands, the ability to get the edge, a counter move with the, with the spin to the inside, ability to play the run. It's looking like a pretty darn good outside linebacker prospect to me in many Let's watch him against the right tackle again. Gets the, in, the outside shoulder, starts to work those hands so that he can get past him. And he's able to bend and turn. And he's almost there, if not for the back, or wing back in this case, able to peel back and hit Mathis. Mathis probably gets the sack here. It's a really nice job getting low after this first initial hit and then works underneath. To be able to work underneath and turn that corner like that, not overrunning the, the, the arc. Look at that. That is some stuff right there that edge rushing coaches will savor with what he can do already. Want another counter? Watch him do this against the left tackle. A little outside in. Totally okie dokes the tackle to the inside. See if we can look at it in really slow motion and see what we can find here. Makes the defender reach out first and lean. Or excuse me, the linebacker, the left tackle. Left tackle begins to throw his hands, expecting that to come. And he extends a little too early, too far. He's able to just work right under, take away, give the arm, take away the arm, kind of like a back. Juking through while nothing happens from that ability to make this kind of move and have at least two types of inside counters to outside moves danger and the hustle against the run the effort I love here he is off the right side he gets double teamed he gets double teamed to the ground McCaffrey hurdles his first man and look at look at our man number five Holy shit, Joe Mathis. On the ground, reaching up. And tripping up McCaffrey from a yard behind the line of scrimmage. So McCaffrey ends up with just a yard. And if you look at what McCaffrey did here, leaping this man, he now has the tackle, or the lineman and the tight end up here. If he can get outside, he's going to get the first down most likely. But it's our man, holy shit, Joe Mathis, on the ground after getting double teamed, making the effort right here to reach up and get his man. And you can tell he's excited. He knows he did his job right there. Effort. Effort, effort, effort. Awareness. Not giving up on a play. Not getting overwhelmed when you're down like this stuff. This is the equivalent of a back who bounces off multiple tackles behind the line of scrimmage only to be able to turn a loss into a gain. That's the equivalent of that with this outside linebacker making this play. Now he's got to continue working on using his hands, especially when he starts to get the corner. He can keep his hands braced into the chest. He might not get ridden to the ground because he could start his bend, but he couldn't do that on this play and he gets, he gets rode down. 
then there's the thought that you can do the impossible, which is working towards the right edge and getting that bend, only to decide that you're going to try and work back inside while you're bent halfway around the edge to the right, and then try and work back to the inside. And that's what's going to happen to you. You're going to get planted. But the aspiration is there, and the belief in his athletic ability, which is immense. It's probably why you try some of this stuff. And experience, too. But, man, the light is coming off from this guy. We're going to watch him a little bit against Arizona here. And what I like about Mathis at the top of the screen here, off the right tackle, is to be able to use his hands, be the aggressor with his hands, deliver a good punch that rocks that defender backwards, stands him upright, and then is able to shed and throw him aside, and then get his hands up on the pass. Now, he doesn't tip it, but this combination of being the first to strike, and to do it hard, and to roll his hips into that, and then just move him to the side, get away, and get those hands up. Nice coordination, nice strength and power, good quickness. It's the kind of thing you want to see. Here he is against the read option. And he's supposed to take on the outside, take the edge. He sees that looks like a good exchange to the back. He waits just enough to confirm it. And is quick enough to make the wrap. Well, it's a four or five yard gain. Maybe he should have seen the reacted a little bit earlier. He maintains his gap responsibility on the quarterback before he makes the tackle. So you're seeing that he's following some of the rules that you're looking for. Let's see a little pass coverage. Some flat responsibility in zone. You see him off the left tackle side here. Makes his drop. Looks and he identifies this crossing route. He drops a little deeper so that he gets behind it. That's good work right there. Making sure that when, before he comes downhill that he's over top. And look at him come from over top with the ball arriving. Make the wrap. It's a very nice play. You know, you look at that when you're studying prospects and you may say, well, that's kind of boring. That doesn't look spectacular. But trust me when I tell you, every week... I watch rookie linebackers get eaten alive in the NFL because they don't have good depth of drops, they don't take good angles over the middle, and they turn four-yard plays that they should have tackled for four yards into 40-yard gains by the back, by the slot receiver, or by the tight end. Man, Atlanta did that a lot with early on in the season. Trust me when I tell you that those linebackers have gotten better because early in the year, the drops weren't there. So to be able to drop a little bit behind and notice that, and know the angle you're supposed to take, good sign for Mr. Mathis. Once again, not a sexy play, but watch him maintain his responsibility on this read option. He doesn't go crashing down the line here. He stays disciplined before he decides to work back inside. He makes sure that the quarterback doesn't have the ball. It's these types of plays that when you mess up and the quarterback pulls it or they know that you tend to do that can create a bigger play so we're seeing some discipline out of him in the run game i also think i like the discipline the way that he tracks a player downfield again he has to stay disciplined to the outside for the edge for the quarterback and he watches the player come downhill now you might say, why didn't he just charge up field right here to make the tackle? He does not know who's going to get the ball. If he charges up here, like you'd like, to, you, you know, you'd like to see if you're the wanting to see the running back stopped, the quarterback's going to see that, pull it, and go outside. So he's got to wait. And the running back makes his dip outside. Watch how he tracks us. He's very patient with his angle. He doesn't try to cheat. Continues to work downhill. And because of the fact that he's been trying to cut inside too early, trying to trying to get the man when he knows he's got defensive help, he's the one that actually ends up making the stop. And that's important because even though it's a big gain for the running back, 
He's playing his responsibility. He's maintaining the, the correct angles. And he's the one that stops his play from becoming an even bigger one. More violent hands? Yeah, let's see some violent hands against this left tackle. Boom! Knocks the man upward. Knocks him into the running lane a little bit. Sheds to the inside. Helps with the wrap. Oh, look at there. We got a little bit of a fumble. Look at that shove. Look at him knock that bigger man back. Use a little bit of a one-arm technique to slide his way to the inside. Reach across. And oh, what did he do there? He ripped the ball free. Yeah, my friends. Joe Mathis. Joe Mathis, who can rock a left tackle. Hands to the face penalty there if you wanted to be ticky-tack about it. <laughs> See how much of a defensive homer I can become when I start watching some of this tape of defensive guys, even though I'm more of an offensive guy. And then work across and rip. And if he didn't get hit by his own teammate trying to shoot for this back, I think we would have seen a cleaner situation there. Want to see more moves? Watch him here on left end. Left tackle comes, or the tight end comes charging up. Watch this little arm over move. Oh, ole. Dodge the bull. Get into the backfield, deliver a hit. Now the runner gets, pulls free. But that hit is the reason why that runner doesn't have a touchdown right there. And it all began with that little sweet move to fake out the the tight end, get square, deliver the hit, and wrap. And you want some effort? You want to see some all-out effort? It's not successful, but the effort's there. Watch him work off left tackle. The running back pulls free of his penetration and works to the outside, bouncing it out. Here's our man, Joe Mathis. Working downhill, maintaining a good angle. Working through a block. And sprinting upfield. Now, he's not going to catch this guy, but you can see the all-out effort there. Until he runs out of gas at the end and there's no shot. But even then, he's still running to the end. This is a high-motor player. Oh, and you know those study diet of read option plays to the back where the quarterback doesn't pull it? Well, look at this. Time to pull, and look who's staying disciplined. Joe Mathis. Sliding outside. Very good slide outside. He's going to have to throw the ball here, and he realizes that he's got to stop. The quarterback's got to stop and retreat. Mathis is there, rushes the throw. Out of bounds, incomplete. Now, one of the things that I'm not so crazy about with Mathis that we saw even in the Stanford game is this willingness to try and duck so that he can get that edge right here. He's ducking, and he doesn't have his hands in a position where he can really use it as a ballast to get around the edge and really turn the corner the way he's capable, and he ends up getting pushed to the ground a lot because of that. So he's going to have to change this technique or refine it a little bit and not always do this this like duck forward where the pads go down and then try and make up for it once he gets around the edge here's a twist works around gets his hands out and look at him time the leap to try and get the ball nearly gets it there active hands what I like about Mathis is he's versatile in the sense that he can strike and he can deliver those heavy hands he can shed a guy aside. He can redirect and make a quick move. He's got some bend around the edge. He's got some awareness with how to use his hands and where he should be trying to aim for the ball, whether it's a ball carrier or a pass. He's a smart player. He's a heady player who's aware of what's going on on the field and trying to make an impact in multiple ways. And once again, here's that motor. Slips that edge defender, uh, edge blocker. Realizes that the back doesn't have the ball, but accounts for that. And watch him scream down the line. And nearly, 
sack the quarterback who knows he's got to throw it away. This guy don't play, folks. He may not be, like, unbelievably fast as a defender, but he's quick enough, and he works hard. This was after he ran, what, 70 yards down the field to chase a back that he wasn't going to catch. More pass pro responsibilities. You have him here over the guard gap, sugaring it, dropping back into the passing lane on the shallow cross. He's able to cover that up enough that the quarterback's got to look elsewhere. He slides to the flat, knows the responsibilities that there's no receivers there. He can charge up field, get his hands up. Good job. Here's a favorite move of Mathis's against edge blockers when he runs. It's that little arm over here. Watch this little arm over action. That was pretty. Gets his hips bent to get downhill and then just digs downhill and sprints to the ball carrier and wraps him right at the ankles. Stops him for a two yard gain. It's pretty work. He's done that a couple of times in your goal line situations. We'll watch this a little slower. But the way that he's able to use his hands here, not just because you can strike with heavy hands, if you've got quick hands and you're often first to get your hands into the chest, you can do this little pretty move like that. Show your hands to the, to the blocker. We're gonna watch it here. He's gonna show his hands and he's gonna take them away. That's what happens when you can strike hard. You can set up this pretty little move and then just sprint downhill. Very nice. And when you have that ability to make that man miss, then you can go back to speed to power. Quick step upfield, strike that defender, stand or that blocker, stand him up and drive him back, oh, about three or four steps. Now, yes, the quarterback gets the pass off. But remember, when you have that ability to compress this pocket like this, and your teammates do good work, which will often happen in the NFL, you're disrupting the pocket and you're creating problems for the offense. So that power element is going to be there too. It's nice, 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 nice work. And now that you've done, oh, I don't know, the little Olay move with the arm over, You've done the, let's bull rush the guy. All right, now let's duck under him. Turn that corner. <laughs> Nearly gets him right there. Trips him up, actually. He did get him. Ducks under. Gets just enough of the foot. And then, so he gets kind of the assist, maybe a half a sack on that if they can. Did you see this move? Watch it again. Look at him slap down the hands. Say, no thank you. It's a pretty play. But my buddy Ryan Riddle would like that right there. That was pretty nice. Now this is an interesting play. 22 seconds left, down by seven, fourth and goal. Or first and goal, 22 seconds left. Watch our man up at the top here. Take on the tight end. And push him outside and then work underneath. The problem is, is that the defensive back decides to get into the act here. And decides he should blitz too. Instead of play that flat behind him. That tells me that I think that this defensive back got overzealous because he thought that the Linebacker was occupied. Both of them come. Quarterback tosses it. It's a touchdown to the man that Mathis was on. Now we're in overtime. They got the lead. Let's see what we can get here. Staying disciplined to that reverse. That's good. And here we are again. Getting a push into the pocket. Getting that nice strike, lifting that man backwards, but good completion. Here's the makings of a pretty move. If you want to project that he's going to get better, watch him hit, get low, use that rip underneath, and turn that corner hard. 
I mean, he's getting, he was getting wrapped around the hips right there, and he's still able to get in on wrapping the quarterback here. He's only going to get more efficient and streamlined with his movement and understand. But if he can turn this corner that sharply, boy, this guy's got some upside. And here we are in overtime. Third and ten. Works outside. Gets a nice strike to work back to the inside. And he's hustling down the field well enough that he's putting that pressure on his quarterback for time to run out. So is his teammate here, the defensive tackle. And he has to throw the ball away. Don't think Mathis didn't help on that play. Now watch this fourth and ten. Is Mathis a part of this? Let's see. Yep. And that's the ball game, folks. Good stuff from Mr. Joe Mathis. What we've seen so far, guy who can drop into coverage, who understands passing lanes, at least to the extent of where he should have position so that he can make a good tackle. We've got some nice moves that convert speed to power that also allow him to um, trick defenders and set them up with either power moves or elusive moves. Ability to bend the edge, ability to get your hands up against the pass locate the ball and rip through it, hustle plays downfield, hustle plays when on the ground, spin moves. This guy's got a lot of tools in his arsenal. He's a guy that uh, I had to do something on him because, to, to be frank, I enjoyed watching him more than Christian McCaffrey. It, it, was, that much, it, was, it was that much fun, so uh, I hope you had fun watching him as well. We'll be doing more defensive prospects as the draft um, nears. So uh, stay tuned to that, which you can do by subscribing to my YouTube channel, the RSP Film Room, or subscribing to my blog, www.mountwaltmanrsp.com. Holy shit, Joe Mathis.